After Nixon's inauguration, a new wave of demonstrations flared up. To date, 34,000 Americans had been killed in Vietnam, exceeding the total for the Korean War. The cost was running at over $25 billion a year. Unknown to the American public, the Air Force, under the veil of extreme secrecy, had been hammering away at communist bases in Cambodia. On orders from the White House and without knowledge of Congress, B-52s had conducted over 3,600 raids on jungle sanctuaries. Nixon soon made the public announcement that a new phase of the war had begun and that an end to the war was in sight. His credibility, however, had reached an unprecedented low. So great was the public outcry against this new involvement that the Congress resurrected the issue of its right to declare war and passed a resolution demanding the evacuation of all American troops in Cambodia and an end to air support there by July 1970. On campuses, the reactions were so widespread as to eclipse all previous protests. In May of 1970, at Kent State University in Ohio, the most telling event of the anti-war movement occurred. The National Guard was brought in to bring order to a peace demonstration being held on campus that had gotten out of control. The Guardsmen fired tear gas cans at the crowd. In the ensuing melee, the National Guardsmen opened fire on the crowd. Thirteen students were shot, four of them fatally. Charges that the student demonstrations were clear-cut cases of communist influence pervaded the Oval Office and Nixon began to distrust even his most ardent supporters. The president turned to illegal forms of behavior to locate evidence to substantiate his beliefs. The following spring, the New York Times began publishing Pentagon leaks about the military activities in Southeast Asia and the White House took an increasingly tight-lipped tenor. Even though Nixon had opened relations with communist China and signed the first strategic arms limitation treaty with the Soviet Union, Nixon's first term in office had been a tumultuous one. But one of the highlights of those years occurred on July 20th, 1969, when Neil Armstrong became the first man to set foot on the moon. John F. Kennedy's goal of landing a man on the moon before the end of the decade had become a reality as millions of people back home on Earth watched in amazement. President Nixon was re-elected in 1972 by an overwhelming majority. Taking the vote as a mandate, he proceeded to harden his position with the Vietnamese. Massive bombing attacks occurred until, on January 27, 1973, a peace accord was signed by all involved in the conflict. Nixon declared that he had achieved peace with honor, but in reality, the United States had lost their first war in history. During Nixon's 1972 re-election campaign, agents of his re-election committee were caught breaking into Democratic National Headquarters in the Watergate Building in Washington, D.C. The scandal that followed was to bring down Nixon's presidency. Special Prosecutor Archibald Cox and later Leon Jaworski gathered evidence of the ensuing investigation. During Senate hearings, it was learned that Nixon had secretly taped many of his conversations in the Oval Office. The tapes disclosed that he was involved from the beginning of the break-in and, more importantly, the cover-up. In an unrelated incident, Vice President Spiro T. Agnew was forced to resign in 1973 following an indictment on charges of criminal behavior. To fill the vacancy, Nixon nominated and Congress approved House Minority Leader Gerald R. Ford as Vice President. Facing impeachment from the House of Representatives, Richard Nixon resigned the presidency on August 9, 1974, something no president has ever done. That same day, Gerald R. Ford was sworn into office as the first president not to have been popularly elected to either the vice presidency or the presidency. Referring to Watergate, Ford declared that our long national nightmare was over and then went on to pardon Nixon for his involvement. Ford served out the remainder of Nixon's term in office, presided over the nation's bicentennial celebration, and was nominated for president in 1976. He lost the election to the former Democratic governor of Georgia, Jimmy Carter.